morning. I welcome our viewers again from across the globe. I thank you for being part of this show. Today we're looking at the special relationship between the IMF, International Monetary Fund, and the Nigerian government under the current president, President Bola Tinubu, because it's beginning to look as if these two are identical twins. They act alike, they reason alike, and they look identical in every sense of the word. Now, if someone tells you right now that there's a special school, there's a special school run by the IMF, and that President Tunubu is a devoted student of that school, you will not doubt it at all. This is because since he came to power, President Tunubu initiated reforms which appear to copy the template of the IMF. For example, Tinubu removed a subsidy on petroleum products, especially premium motor spirit, which my American friends and viewers refer to as gasoline. He also allowed the domestic currency, that's the Naira, to float in the foreign exchange market. And this has resulted in massive economic dislocation, upheaval, inflation, contraction of the economy, massive unemployment, and hardship for the people of Nigeria. The IMF report 2024 on Nigeria has this to say, and I want to say that I'm going to place the link in the description box below. It says Nigeria, under its current administration, has set out on an ambitious reform path to restore macroeconomic stability and support inclusive growth. The authorities reformed the fuel price subsidies, unified official foreign exchange windows, and are focused on revenue mobilization, governance, and enhancing the monetary and exchange rate policy frameworks, as well as strengthening social safety nets. Inflation reached 32% year-on-year in February 2024, driven mainly by food price inflation, 38%, and loose financial conditions. With continued monetary tightening, inflation is projected to gradually decline to 24% year-on-year, at the end of 2024. And so the IMF has been singing the high praises of President Bola Tinubu. They even predicted that inflation by the end of 2024 will come down to about 24%. We're now in November 2024, even as we speak, and inflation levels in Nigeria are now at about 32.7% according to trading economics. Yes, 32.7%. That's the current inflation levels in Nigeria. So the IMF report was full of commendation for what the government of Nigeria is doing at this point in time. For example, the IMF directors, they commended the authorities' action to rein in inflation and restore market confidence. I want to say that there has been no reining in of inflation and there has been no restoration of confidence. Companies are divesting from Nigeria under a very harsh economic climate. The IMF directors, they said they welcome the authorities' work on a comprehensive revenue mobilization strategy, including boosting tax enforcement and broadening the tax base. What the IMF is saying in simple terms, is that they support the taxation policy of President Bola Tinubu. And we want to say on this channel that Nigerians have been subjected to all manner of taxation, yet no visible improvement is noticeable in terms of investment in infrastructure and in services. And so on the 25th of October, 2024, In Washington, D.C., the IMF held a media briefing to present what they refer to as the Regional Economic Outlook for Sub-Saharan Africa. 
And then Nigeria is a, is a, is a sub-Saharan African country. And the IMF regional director for Africa was asked a few questions about Nigeria. And he said, in response, he said, among other things, that the resources that would have engendered a healthy macroeconomic situation foster growth, diversification of the economy, resources that would have been utilized to invest in health, education, and social infrastructure were being used up by fuel subsidies. In other words, if I have to break that down, the IMF supports the removal of subsidies and the liberalization of the economy of Nigeria. They support the policy direction of the Tinubu government. But this is what is worrisome to the rest of us, because the IMF director, the original director for Africa, was quick to declare that the policies of the Tinubu government are domestic policies and have nothing to do with the IMF. Can you imagine that? The gentleman, he simply denied. He said, no, we don't have any hand in this. It is not what we recommended. We don't have a hand in it. Um, the policies that have been implemented in Nigeria are mainly and principally domestic uh, policies formulated by the current administration. And so the harsh reality is that these measures have not yielded any positive outcome. And the functionaries of the uh, administration are busy telling Nigerians that, oh, there is light at the end of the tunnel, and that these reforms are necessary for economic growth. If we don't do it now, the generations yet unborn will suffer. And so the umbrella body of the labor unions in Nigeria, they have told IMF technocrats that their denial is in vain. They said to them, we can see through the veil. We know what is happening here. The IMF is fully aware of the policies being implemented by the Tinubu administration, even from their opulent offices in faraway Washington, and they are cheering Tinubu on. I want to read from Channel's TV report of October 28, 2024. It's titled, Esau's Hands, but Jacob's Voice. NLC drags IMF for fuel subsidy removal denial. The NLC, like I said, is the Nigerian Labor Congress. That's the umbrella body for the labor unions in Nigeria. The report says the Nigerian Labour Congress has criticized the IMF for its denial of being responsible for advising the Nigerian government to remove subsidies on petrol. Petrol is what uh, my American viewers refer to as gasoline. It says President Bola Tinubu's removal of subsidies in May 2023 has resulted in the rise of a premium motor spirit, that's the rising price, from 175 naira per liter to between 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 in Lagos and its environs, and even to up to 1,300 naira per liter in far northern states of Nigeria. Now, a number of my viewers may be wondering, what's the big deal about fuel prices? Why? They may be bemused about the whole issue of the cost of fuel, that is gasoline. And now the reality and the truth is that in Nigeria, once the car cost of gasoline goes up, once the cost goes up, it affects the price of everything else. The prices of goods and services go up sharply, and the traders and the businessmen and the women will tell you that, oh, it is because of the high cost of fuel. It does not matter whether the increase in price of goods and services is commensurate with the increase in fuel price. It doesn't matter. It simply goes up. I read further. 
In a statement on Sunday, NLC National President Joe Ajero said the IMF's supposed recommendations have led to increased socioeconomic hardship and stagnation in Nigeria. And this was after the IMF's African Regional Director, Abebe Selesi, during a press conference at the IMF and World Bank annual meeting, meetings in Washington, D.C., noted that the Nigerian government's decision to remove fuel subsidy was a domestic issue. Now, the meeting that this gentleman is referring to was held on the 25th of October, 2024, in Washington. According to the president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, and I quote, the IMF's recent statement shows evasion, claiming Nigeria's subsidy removal was a domestic decision, while ignoring its significant influence on policy making in developing countries. In effect, the Nigerian uh, Labour Congress is saying that the policies of President Bola Tinubu, they look very much like the hands of Esau by the voice of Jacob in relation to what the IMF would normally recommend. So the IMF is indirectly pulling the strings from far away. And our people refer to it as remote control. Yes, they, they do remote control from far away Washington. Now, according to the Nigerian Labor Congress, it is increasingly alarmed by the IMF's denial, which reflects the troubling policies imposed on Nigeria by the IMF and World Bank. The IMF seems to be distancing itself from the future backlash of these policies, but Nigerians are not naive. Yes, take note of that. Our people are not naive. Our eyes are now open. And it says we recognize the destructive effects of these uh, harmful strategies on Nigeria and Africa. So you see, you guys in IMF, you cannot fool anybody anymore these days. The president of the NLC continues. He says it is disingenuous for the IMF to deny complicity, especially since we have warned the government about the consequences of adopting these policies. NLC asserted that the disconnect between the IMF recommendations and the reality in Nigeria highlights a major oversight in the fund's economic policy. By distancing itself from Nigeria's subsidy removal, the IMF shows inconsistency in its guidance, urging austerity whilst avoiding responsibility for ensuing hardship. So the IMF recommends austerity measures. They recommend all manner of things. But when the harsh effects of their recommendations, when these effects begin to manifest, they will say, you see, we don't have any hand in this matter. They will be in denial. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. The harsh reality is that there is unprecedented inflation, the type that Nigeria has never seen since 1960, when the nation became independent. The harsh reality is that there is hunger, poverty, starvation, and anger in the land. People are stretched beyond limit. And those of us living in the diaspora, we are equally stretched. If you doubt what I'm saying, ask any Nigerian that is living abroad. He will explain that to you. Also, as we conclude, the NLC emphasized the need for Nigeria and other developing countries and African countries in particular to reclaim their economic sovereignty. Yes, we preach that on this channel. The NLC says that African countries must resist externally imposed policies that fail to take into consideration local contexts and the needs of the masses of the people. That is what we preach here. So Nigeria and by extension, the entire Africa must implement policies and address the genuine needs of its citizens by prioritizing economic strategies that promote growth, social welfare, inclusion, 
equity rather than adopt the stringent measures, austerity measures of the IMF that result in very deep economic difficulties and then social unrest. And then the NRC, they ended their statement, and I quote, we urge the World Bank and the IMF to stop stifling our nation so we can breathe freely. And here we draw the curtains to our show today. I do hope that the information that I've given is, is uh, something that has enlightened a number of my viewers. I do hope that you find uh, the things we do on this channel interesting. This is uh, the foremost uh, uh, African channel on geopolitical analysis with special re reference to Africa. So if you have enjoyed our show today and you found the content interesting or enlightening, consider to support the growth of this channel. You may decide to subscribe, and I really urge you to subscribe. You may also decide to like. You may decide to share what we do. And then, to my viewers, I also elicit comments from you, because that's a sign of your engagement with this channel. And there are other avenues that you may support our growth. For example, uh, the purchase of a one-off super thanks, or via membership. Whichever way you choose to support us, I just want to say I'm grateful and thank you so much. Bye.